Coming up on Marcus and Joni. He's the lead pastor of Wave Church in Los Angeles, California. Israel Campbell opens up about his authentic, relevant ministry. Plus, we talk with speaker, author, and songwriter, Brenda Crouch. Live from Daystar's World Headquarters in Dallas, Texas, Marcus and Joni. And now, your hosts, Marcus and Joni Lamb. Everybody, thank you for joining Joni and me today. We always love coming into your home. I want to tell you about our guests in a moment, but I was thinking about recent launches as your day star continues to grow across America and around the world. So I want to find out about new viewers of Daystar on AT&T UVerse in high definition. Is that right? AT&T U-verse? That is right. Yeah. That's right. In high definition, I think it's channel 1563 or some kind of number. Hey, I got it right. It's hard to remember all these channel numbers. I know it. I but know. if you're a new viewer, uh, we've been on U-verse for a long time, but not in high definition. So we're so excited about that. Now Joni looks even younger and more beautiful oh, no. than she did before. Show every little wrinkle and every flaw. What wrinkle? Well, what flaw? Sure, I have many. <laughs> and then just a few days ago, Comcast in Minneapolis, St. Paul, channels 244 and 288. Yes. So we have a TV station in Minneapolis, and a well is on other cable and satellite. But if you're a brand new viewer on Comcast in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. We would love to hear from you too. So at and Verse HD, Comcast, Minneapolis, St. Paul, call the number that's on the screen or go to daystar.com, click on comments and just tell us if you're a new viewer. I don't need your address or phone number, but maybe the city and state that you're watching from. How about that? That's good. That's good. Well, tell everybody about our guest today. Well, Pastor Israel Campbell is here of the Wave Church in Los Angeles. He's got a new book. And Brenda Crouch is here. She's also from California. we got the California kids here today. And she's going to be talking about some very personal things that's going to help a lot of people, Joni, that have gone through abuse, that have been hurt. Yes. And, you know, the ones that are closest to us are the ones that can hurt us the most, and it affects us more. It's true. It's so true. So it's something that's going to help a lot of people. She's today. got a new book called Fight Forward. We want to tell you about that. You want to be sure. Fight Forward? Fight Forward. Okay, and, uh, so not backwards. So she's here, and she's going to be talking a little bit about her personal story, which I love testimonies. I love it when we share right, personal testimonies. You think that's her actual uh, handwriting of her name. I don't know. We'll I'm gonna ask, ask for that. For that. <laughs> yeah, that looks that looks sharp. Well, Josh and Rachel are standing by. Honey, Josh looks really, really sharp Dapper. today. Oh, I think. Yeah, he looks today. really good. He looks. If uh, you're wondering, Rachel's trying to get more steps. This is in. not fair. You yeah. can't do this live on the program. <laughs> she is working hard, Marcus. And in fact, just before uh, you crossed over to us in the prayer courtyard yesterday, over to you. What's that mean? Oh, I, I just before you, you pitched it to us. Pitched okay. it, yes. Pitched it. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm still in process of becoming an American. You so, passed your test this morning. I did. I Congratulations! Did. You got 100, you guys. So thank you for all your prayers. Yes, thank you and to the Grandma's Club and the Great Grandma's Club. He got 100, club. and he's going to actually be sworn in next week as the brand new United States of America citizen, Mr. Yeah. Joshua Brown. I pledge allegiance. So it's a, it's a great honor. <laughs> it's been a flag. very uh, long time coming. But yesterday, are Tony, you going to sing the national anthem for us? Oh, n not right now. What about think. the other song I taught you? <laughs> Actually, you could sing that. No, Rachel helped me I study about 15 original colonies. No, 15? You know, 13, babe. 13. I was, I, didn't ask you that I was testing her. But yesterday, 
Um, Rachel and Joni are very, very, very competitive, as Marcus, you know, and same with Rebecca and Susie. And so here I am in the prayer courtyard getting ready to um, deliver an encouraging word. And Rachel is once again going back and forth. I took a little video as evidence. Check this out. Rachel, what are you doing? She's getting her steps in. And she's still going right now as it goes over. So the boys versus girls competition, I think the girls are going to win. But it's very pink behind us. What's what's going on? It's well, something very special. The family step challenge continues, um, but we're super excited to be celebrating Mother's Day this weekend. And Josh, you want to take it off? Yeah, we are so grateful for our parents and most importantly, our mothers. Joni, you have been such an incredible mother in love to me. I love how you coined that term mother in love, not mother in law, because it's love. And um, I just so appreciate you and especially the delicious meal you cooked for me. It seemed like at maybe 10 o'clock the other night mm -hmm. when we were exercising. You just take such great care of us and you're so selfless in the way that you give and the way that you honour your family, you honour Marcus, but you lead with excellence, you lead with love and you lead with the highest um, amount of integrity and character. If and your so love language was that. words of affirmation, then you would be overflowing with that but Bob I just want to say that I can always count on you girl and I've been so proud of you with our step challenge working hard there's a picture of us uh, in South Africa and um, I love that you're always there you're always available and you do so many for so many people and we're so grateful that we get to call you mom and yes. we hope that you have the most amazing, beautiful Mother's Day. You absolutely deserve it. I love you. And a big happy Mother's Day as well to my mother in Australia Winda, on the other side of the world. You. And uh, <laughs> having two of the best mothers ever. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's awesome. Wow. I wasn't expecting all that. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. And make sure you remember your mother on Mother's Day. And I'm thankful for my mother. She's been such a blessing in my life. Thankful that she's still here on this earth. And I was uh, make sure and send her a little something for Mother's Day. I don't want to say what it is because she watches every day from South Carolina. But happy Mother's Day. Mwah. Love uh, you, Mom. You have already taken care of your mother. I have. Yes, I have. I usually do. So I see lots of things going on around here. So You do? <laughs> What, your big round brown ones are noticing things? <laughs> yes, yes. Why are you looking around? I'll just look forward. I'll look straight ahead. Pretend like All right, I'm Brenda anything. Crouch's book talks about looking forward. Fight forward, yes. Yes, so you need to be looking forward. Okay. Don't be looking around seeing everything. Well, then, was it the Apostle Paul said forgetting those things that are behind? Yeah, or to the side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Weiss and Rebecca Lamb Weiss. And Jonathan Weiss, you have... A new mother to be yes, in do. your care. Yes, you do. So, well, I want to know how are you going to take care of my baby on Mother's Day? And this there is, is an anniversary. Ever Mother's Day. So, I'm excited that you're a mother now, mother of our firstborn son. And, um, you know, how am I going to take care of her? Well, I have a couple surprises. Uh, one's already in the mail. And then, other than that, Aww. we have our uh, baby moon up and coming. So, Yes. These are some ways that I'm going to Wait, what's treat. a baby moon? A baby moon is like a honeymoon, but when you're pregnant with your firstborn child, I think it's your firstborn, you taught me what this is. <laughs> you go on a trip together and celebrate the new life that's coming into your lives. So we are going to be doing that. We're both that really excited. We're week. both really ready to get a break from everything, aren't we? <laughs> it's going to be really good to, yeah. to recharge together. And but you celebrate... Be, before that baby comes in and changes your life forever. This yes. will be the last time forever. to be. But I want to say something to both of the moms in my life. I want to say something to my mom personally. I could not ask for a better mother than Joni Lynn Trammell Lamb, all four names right there. And there is where my mom climbed a mountain with me to take photos with me. Thank you, mom, for all you've done. You've gone to the greatest heights both physically, mentally, and emotionally to be the best mother that you can be. And I hope that I'm a great mother like you. Including Joni on that very hike <laughs> was climbing on <laughs> top of a tree to get a photo of Rebecca and I. And is she, she impaled her herself? It was so intense. <laughs> With but that a log. is the love 
of a mother. And so we and love you, Joey, so folks. much. We had to rip off a flannel and tie it around her leg. We did. And she was like, I'm fine. I'm She's fine. She's a boss, y'all. She's a trooper. And then we want to say something to Catherine. That's right. My mom. My mother in love, your mom. And I want to say that I love her too and that she's been the best in love I could ever Aww. ask for. And so I know that you're watching. We love you so much. And, and I'm so grateful that you have prayed for me, encouraged me, stood by me my whole life, mom. You've been such a blessing to me and to Rebecca now. And we just want to honor you and say how much we love you today. Yes. And thank you for praying for him and for us and for That's all, right. everything. Back to you, Mark. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to say that Joni is the greatest mother that I've ever seen. And she learned a lot from her mother. She learned maybe a little bit from my mother. But you've just been an incredible mother. If I was a billionaire and I needed a, a mother, I would hire you. <laughs> Besides being a great wife, you. you're so great as a mother to all of our kids, and I see you use such wisdom and such grace and such love and dealing with them, and you've just been just like such a, a rock and like glue, spiritual glue to all of our yeah. kids. And people comment about our kids and their, how wonderful they are, but a lot of it is, and I invariably will say this, I'll say, well, they have a great mother. So thank, thank you. you for the great thank mother. You, that you are and continue to be. Thank you. Jonathan Lamb and Susanna Sagar Lamb. Walking circles around me right now. If you guys see that, <laughs> well, I had to I make saw it this it. morning when you didn't wake me up, you know. <laughs> uh, but we are here to talk about something extra special: Mother's Day. That's right. So you go first. So first of all, of course, I want to wish my mom Happy Mother's Day. She's an incredible mother, and we share one of our love languages, which is acts of service. And I can say all throughout my life, she's been so great at showing her love through acts of service, one of which would be anytime I come home, even now, she always is like, Jonathan, can I get you something to eat? Can I make you a cup or can I fix you a cup of coffee? Always thinking sure I'm making sure my stomach's full. And then when I went to college, you know, she drove all the way up there with me to Oklahoma, made sure everything was spick and span clean, spent like two hours, like cleaning every little nook and cr cranny and um, just making sure I was well taken care of before, you know, I left uh, on my own for college. And she's just always been there for me. And I love you so much, Ron. Thank you for, for always showing your love and being a great mother. Well, I want to ask Thank Susie you, a Jonathan. question. Susie, this was before Susie. So are you glad that Joni was taking good care of Jonathan to get him ready for you? Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that made me fall in love with Jonathan is the way that he loved his mom. I mean, he is, the whole world can fade away, but he will protect and stand by his mom. And that, and that just showed me what a Aww. great guy he was. I trust his heart completely. And he does. He, and another thing you, you gain from your mom is your competitive spirit. I have not realized how competitive Joni and Jonathan Lamb are. They are. <laughs> Until this week. I mean, I get little texts like, you can do this from Joni, of course. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I want to just say happy Mother's Day to, to my mom and Joni. And there's that, there's the picture, you know, Joni, you, ever since I'm you know, seven years, I've been married to Jonathan. You've always been extremely full of love and fun and like, like a best friend and a mom in, in every sense. And, and, you know, as my mom, own mother has raised me in that same way, you've loved me and embraced me. And there's my mom and happy Mother's Day to my mom, too. I just I thank God with all my heart. I could start crying now. But, you know, I just I've got double portion of um, all your love. I could have never even becoming a mother myself. I couldn't have never walked this journey of motherhood, especially the newborn stage and toddler stage. I'm constantly calling and you're always there with patience and teaching me and loving on me. Even those first days right after having the baby, it was probably one of the hardest seasons of my life because no sleep and I was cranky a lot and felt so incompetent. And uh, you were just always there on with, with phone calls, with staying up the night, trying so I could sleep, staying with the baby. Uh, and yeah, just with your friendship and love. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. <laughs> And of course, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. You're an incredible mother to our two children. Thank you. You've made great sacrifices, obviously, <laughs> the pregnancies and then the <laughs> long nights and then showing them love every day. And Aww. we create such a fun you know, environment for our family. Well, it's, it's teamwork. It's, it's great. So Absolutely. Appreciate you. Thank happy you. Mother's Day to you as well. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that is Aww, so thank great. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. And yeah. 
We've got uh, Susie is a wonderful mother to little Israel and Ariel. Well, I would just say to you, if you have a mother, you are blessed. My mother is in heaven. So love your mother as long as you can, as often as you can, and let her know how very special she is. Not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Because one day when she's gone, you will miss her so much. And you'll think, I wish I could talk to her one more time. I wish I could ask her advice. I wish I could get her to pray with me about a serious situation. So love your mother. They are God's gift to us. Next to the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift God could give us on this earth. So I love every one of you mothers. Okay, something, do you kids have something that you're wanting to, hello, to hello. say or do or we present? Pray some beautiful flowers. And these are from all of us. Thank you. And big happy Mother's Day thank to you. Uh, Thank you. These are my you, favorite mother. color, purple, and my favorite flowers. Our Joni, tell me about, because you always know what these flowers are. I, I know what the roses are. Hydrangeas. That's I the love. funniest name, and hydrangeas. And these beautiful roses and the purple, just gorgeous. Oh, what are thank those you. green ones right there? And these are little hydrangeas well, too. Well, then what are those big purple? Hydrangeas too. They're, how can they both be hydrangeas? They're different types. They're different kinds. Oh, and then these little little purple ones. Honey, I don't know what they okay. are. And, <laughs> and this is, flower expert, this is Becca's first Mother's Day. Yes, yes it is. so it's gonna be How does it great. feel, girl? How does it feel? It's extraordinary. I just have to say that she has been such an amazing mother already. She's already Ooh. taking care of this little baby and doing so good of like, resting and stretching and doing all these things. I'm like, wow, where is this motherly instinct coming from? So I'm proud of you as a- the, the All right, but wait, I have to, this is the one that always got me with Joni. Then we need to move along with this program is the nesting The nesting instinct. instinct. So Becca, have you gotten that yet? Yes, absolutely. I want my whole life to be in order and the whole house to be in order and she, everything to be organized. And the baby room to be ready. Yes, she's already in the yes. baby room praying and having a quiet time in there, preparing that room for our, our baby boy. Yeah. That's awesome. Aww, that's All awesome. right, well, are you going to sing? We are. We're going to take a picture, too. Come on, everybody. Uh, we are just right Dad, here you love live the on the photos, air. don't you? Yeah. Wait, Susie, Wait, this is I awkward. Can you, Susie. Okay, can you see everybody? Yeah. Can you see Susie? <laughs> Happy right. Mother's Day. Well, let me just say that our prayer lines are available. Wonderful, godly men and women, ready, willing, and able to pray with you and to pray for you. So if you have a need, feel free to call. And it's a free call. In the United States, it's called a toll-free number. In internationally, it's called a free phone number. Different numbers for different countries. And of course, you can always go to daystar.com on the internet and send your prayer request or comment or question in electronically. Well, Pastor Israel Campbell is here today from Wave Church of Los Angeles. Brenda Crouch is here today to share very personal and moving uh, stories from her life. And she has a new book. But right now, let's worship the Lord with the Daystar singers and band as they sing Glory to Glory. Glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Hey, say. in all his goodness and we thank Come 
fulfilling God's destiny for your life? Israel Campbell is here to help you walk out your purpose next. Some of you this morning, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to cause you to be uncomfortable in your surrounding because there are these moments that there are barriers that have to be removed and there are barriers that have to be scooted over. Maybe it's a financial barrier. Maybe it's a relational barrier. Maybe it's a barrier with sickness. But I believe today that if we can get a hold of an attitude of faith, God can move the barrier and we can see some transformation. Well, Pastor Israel David Campbell is with us today, and he's written a book and called, entitled The Art of Sonship. Sonship. And which son will you be? And talks about King David and his 20 sons. That's a lot of sons. That is. Please join Joni and me as we welcome from Los Angeles, the senior pastor of the Wave Church of L.A., Pastor Israel Campbell. Good to see you again. Hey, good to see you. Okay, so of course we love all things Israel around here. Yes, so we do. <laughs> tell us about your name, Israel David. I know. Yeah. You guys, your grandson's name was, I think, a little bit more intentional. Like you were thinking, yeah. hey, come on, prophetic <laughs> it mind. It was actually a dream, yeah. Her yeah. mother had a dream that she had a boy and his name was Israel. Wow. While she was pregnant, before we knew what he was going to be. See, way more intentional <laughs> than mine because my uh, biological parents weren't even Christians at the time. And wow. so, you know, it was kind of the 70s. I think they were playing spin the globe, and it was this <laughs> far away from being Iraq David Campbell. So wow. uh, praise God that God got involved with it, right? Yeah, you know what? God that can get great. involved in those situations, and he works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? He really does. Yeah. And, you know, not, I mean, uh, my family wasn't uh, raised in church or anything, and so then now to be a pastor yeah. and the name Israel David has worked out pretty That's good. That's good, and so I'm sure you know what Israel means but we always say well a prince, prince that, that has, has power, power with, with god, god. and you know in the bible names had great meaning and yeah. there was destiny behind names so even though your parents may not have realized the significance of it that's that doesn't matter it's the name not who named you or why they named you yeah Absolutely. and so you still have that destiny related to that so david in the bible he is uh my favorite uh, Old Testament Bible character because I can relate to him so much. Mm. And I didn't even realize that he had 20 sons. 20? That's a lot 
He's, son. he's giving the Duggards a run for their money. I mean, <laughs> uh, 20 sons. And uh, what um, I do in my book is just kind of go through each one of those sons because think about David as the father. I mean, he's the greatest worship leader of all times. If he still had uh, royalties on some of the words, he'd be doing pretty well right yes, now. He, would. he was an incredible warrior. He was an incredible military strategist. And then even administration, which is kind of weird because most people that are really highly creative like David don't also have the admin part but his administration of you know how uh, politically how the temple was organized was incredible so he's got these 20 sons that have the DNA of a giant killer yet some of these sons we know nothing about all they are is listed in the genealogy and other sons were heir apparents but because of some of the decisions that they made in their life they almost in a sense uh, disqualified themselves yeah, from being who God called them to be and some of them are just known for the bad deeds that they committed yeah so Let's talk about some of the ones that stand out. Of course, we all know about Absalom. Yeah. Uh, he had long hair. He's very handsome. He, he. Wait, did you write this book or <laughs> did our no, guest just, write this book? We both book. read from the same book. Okay. The, but, yeah. yeah. So tell us about Absalom. Yeah, well, you know, um, Absalom, the shame about Absalom is most people know the rebellion part. Yeah. Um, but what's a tragic uh about that is his name actually we we're talking about the power of names actually talks about peace so uh, absalom meant in the root peace yet he never fulfilled his prophetic destiny so kind of like shalom absalom exactly yeah. and so he his name his father named him this guy's going to represent peace and he actually ended up uh, um, you know for all eternity always being known as rebellious and that would be that was his destiny but one well, of I want to say something about this this is very important I had this discussion over the weekend with a pastor we all know about the sovereignty of God but some of us forget that God gave every person a free will God is not going to make you fulfill your destiny. You can have the most incredible name that's ever been given anybody, but you have choices, and your choices have consequences, either good or bad. So Absalom had a good name, but he made choices that went against the plan of God for his life. But you have to study that further and understand that his sister had been wronged. Right. And the real key to, I think, his turn was when that root of bitterness came in Absolutely. and unforgiveness. So that's an important part to understand that we can detour God's destiny for our life if we allow that root of bitterness to come in early. Was that an important Absolutely. part of the story? Yeah, and you look into it, that's what happened. He didn't like how David handled the situation. And because he didn't like it, he didn't, you know, then that bitterness went in. And a lot of times, it's not even what happens to us. It's what happens to somebody else that we know. And so God will give us the grace and the power to get through the hurts that we experience. But God never gives us the grace and power to get over somebody else's hurt. And yeah. so wow. part of that bitterness was he didn't deal with it. And then it's, it's so interesting because the thing that Absalom was so upset upset about his um, sister getting raped. But we know at the end of Absalom's life, he ends up doing 10 times as worse. He rapes 10 women in front of all of Israel. So the thing that he started out with is just a seed of bitterness. Ooh, think about it's that. amazing how much it grows. And he was trying to stand up for his sister and the injustice that had been wronged against her, but it just shows how even the rebellion was was not the beginning of the story. It was that unforgiveness, that seed of bitterness that opened the door for the enemy to much greater things that would take place in his life to destroy and him. And seeds grow yeah. and produce fruit and they get bigger. Tell us about another son or two. Sure. Well, you know, the Bible gives us a lot about Adonijah, who was kind of self-promoting. Uh, the Bible also talks about Amnon, and Amnon was the one that actually uh, raped uh, Tamar. Tamar, yeah. And what's interesting about Amnon is um, 
he never raised his hand and had crucial conversations with David. And if there was anybody that could have helped David in the situation that he had, David had some pretty extensive history with Bathsheba where he could have said, hey, let's yeah. not go there or whatever. In fact, Tamar says something interesting. Tamar says, talk to David, talk to the king. It's almost like she was saying, there's a crucial conversation that needs to be had. There's a moment where you need to lift up your hand and say, how do I deal with this? And that's not who Ammon went to. Ammon went to a peer. Ammon went to a friend and didn't know how to, in, in a sense, raise his hand to a spiritual father, raise his hand to his own father and say, help me walk through this. What do I do with these feelings? What do I do with this situation? And unfortunately, I think in the body of Christ, we've got a lot of people that don't know how to say, I need some help. And of course, then Absalom later would be the one who would murder, have him murdered. Absolutely. And so it just like continued to cycle, but it's almost like you see a real lack of communication between this family. That was one of the issues, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, you know, I think we can do that in the church too. We can have good church services yeah. and we can say amen and we can feel the power of God. But a lot of the discipleship and a lot of the spiritual growing are conversations and real conversations uh, beyond. We were talking uh, with your son and daughter-in-law just a, a little bit in the green room and just you know, the best actors and actresses actually don't live in L.A. where we live. The best actors and actresses are probably at church at 9 and 11 on a Sunday oh, all yeah. throughout America. And we know yeah. how to say the right Christianese words and we know yeah. how to raise our hand. But a lot of times we don't have the skill or the honesty to say, I need some help in this area, whether it's depression, whether it's an addiction or just a, a root of bitterness like you were saying yeah. that's growing in our life. Okay, in the book you talk about three types of sonship. What are those three? Yeah, so I talk a little bit about your normal, just your natural, you know, uh, our fathers uh, that we would have. Uh, my biological dad, um, unfortunately, I was abandoned. So I kind of talk a little bit about oh. the biological uh, um, sons. Then sonship. It's almost I, like an orphan. Like yeah. you, see, you see people in the body of Christ that have that orphan spirit, if you will, because they didn't have a mom or dad. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so talk a little bit about that because that relationship, if you've been abandoned or even if you just had a bad relationship with your dad, it's amazing how that can pull in to your relationship with God because you have this warped sense of, well, yeah. that's what my dad did. And so God's going to abandon me because I was abandoned. So we talk a little bit about the paternal. Then we talk a little bit about um, spiritual sons and daughters. You know, the Bible says the bride of Christ. So sonship is not just a, a guy situation. It's guys and girls. Um, but that concept of, you know, we've got pastors that, um, you know, uh, Pastor Steve Kelly is my senior pastor. You guys know them, but there right. he's yeah. also my he's also my spiritual dad and so I might not have a great relationship with my biological dad but I have a spiritual dad that I can learn from yeah. he can pour into my life he can say Israel you're being a knucklehead and yeah. I can receive that so there's that and then of course all of those tie into um, at the end of the day we have a heavenly father and so no matter how messed up maybe our biological even if we've had a tough church experience, um, we always have a heavenly father that loves us and we are called to be sons and learn how to operate in that dynamic. It's important to understand our heavenly father because so many times he's tainted by the images of our earthly fathers. How did you get past that personally? Yeah, you know, it has a lot to do with the book and the story of David looking at his sons and realizing each one of those sons, Marcus, is what you said, they had a choice. How are they going to respond? And so I've had to do that in my own life. How am I going to respond? Am I going to look to uh, my situations and be a victim? Or can I look to my heavenly father and actually realize I can be a victor? I can actually overcome. And it is like what you were saying, Joni, is you have to, if you, if you don't see um, your heavenly father right, it can affect every part of your relationship in your my how I am as a husband, how I am as a son, how I am now as a father. Yeah, so and so important. I'm so thankful that we have a God that can, no matter what our past, heal us. There are people watching right now that you can so relate to what we're talking about and your earthly father has so disappointed you. 
And there are even some of you watching that you've used it as an excuse for bad behavior in your own life. And you said, well, if my father had done this or had done the other, then maybe I wouldn't be the way that I am. But you've got to move past that victim mentality and you've got to surrender that earthly father to the Lord. And then you've got to allow the Lord to do what he wants to do in your life to make you the kind of father, like um, Israel is talking about the, the kind of son, the kind of grandfather that God has called you to be. And so today, if you're struggling with that, or even if you, um, whether you're male or female, if you, if you had a difficult uh, situation with your father, uh, I just think there's just an anointing here right now to pray. Yeah. There are people that are standing by ready to pray with you. You can go to uh, daystar.com and click on prayer, and you don't have to give us, uh, you know, your information. Just tell us uh, maybe the, the name of that earthly father, and we're going to pray over all of those that come in today. So go to the phone right now and call that toll-free number. What is it about, honey, the, the, the power of agreement when we know something's going on in our life that we want broken? Well, you know, God doesn't want us to be alone, and He made us to be a part of community. And there's just power when you have agreement. The Scripture tells us that over and over and over, knowing somebody cares, knowing somebody understands, and that they have uh, empathy with you, it just makes it easier to persevere. And I thank God for that. So the book is The Art of Sonship. Which son will you be? There is a website, israelcampbell.com. So in conclusion, Israel, if people get the book and read it, what do you feel like they'll take away from it? Well, uh, uh, not to uh, do the spoil alert, but uh, I love the New Testament scripture verse where blind Bartimaeus begins to yell out, Son of David, have mercy on me. He's calling out on Jesus. And uh, I just believe that uh, that same thing, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he could help blind Bartimaeus, Joni, to go along with what you were saying, kind of those people that are calling out for prayer, Jesus is available for them no matter what they have been through. And let me just say, you might just think, well, this book is just for guys because they're talking about sons. But with Mother's Day looming, we need to, mothers need to have insights about their sons as well because you are such an influence on them. And uh, I know this book will be a great blessing to you. All right, call that number today if you need prayer. Joni talked about different situations that may be uh, affected by what we're sharing with you. And if that's you, maybe you're a son and you feel like uh, uh, a stepchild or an orphan. Or maybe you're wondering, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Maybe you didn't have a good uh, relationship with your earthly father and you want to have a better one or you want to have a better one now with your heavenly father. Make that call today and we are going to pray. In just a few moments, Brenda Krauts is going to come. She's going to share from her new book entitled Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You. And she's going to be sharing a lot of personal things that she went through in her family as a young person that I know is going to help a lot of people. But right now, here's a great song that goes along with all of this. Worship the Lord with Joni and the Daystar Singers and Band as they sing, You're My Father.
never change, you never go, never leave me alone. You're my father, arms wide open. So I run to the arms of the one that I love. You're my father, arms wide open. You never change, you never go, never leave me alone. You're my It's time to fight forward and reclaim the real you. We unpack that and more with Brenda Crouch, next. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, we know that we have what we have asked of Him. Whenever you need it, whatever it is, we are here for you. Well, we're so glad that you're watching today and don't change that dial because you're gonna hear a very compelling testimony. Brenda Crouch is our next guest and she's a singer, a songwriter, an author, a speaker, a TV host, uh, does so many different things. Many of you will know her husband, Paul Crouch Jr. And she's written a book entitled Fight Forward and it has to do with healing and overcoming abuse. And if you've never been abused, you can't really know how greatly and deeply that that affects a person. Yeah. And then there's some of you that have been abused and you've never told anybody Maybe you are embarrassed. Maybe Satan has tried to put shame or condemnation or misguided guilt and make you think, well, somehow it was your fault. Well, if you've been abused, it probably was not your fault. So get out of that mentality. And, uh, and then maybe you are stuck in the victim mentality and you've never gotten over this. Well, today there's hope because Brenda's gonna share what God did for her and what God did for her, he can and he will do for you. So please join Joni and me as we welcome Brenda Crouch. Hello, young lady. Bless you. So good to see you. Bless you. Good to see you. Okay, stuff's falling <laughs> forth. Maybe we're already making a mess. No, forth. revival's <laughs> breaking out. That's what it is. So Brenda, people look at you, and you're just so lovely, and you you, you have a smile almost all the time. And I don't think anybody would think, man, this yeah. girl's been through hell and she's been abused and been mistreated. So you can't always just look at somebody right. and determine what kind of uh, background they have, can exactly. you? Exactly. And you know, that really is um, why part of my motivation for writing this book and I always knew there was going to be a book somewhere at some point in my life because I'm a writer. Yeah. But, you know, three years ago, it's about three years ago, God really spoke to me. And I was in Israel at the time. And I was looking at the Dead Sea and at Mount Moab and 
thinking about the Ruth journey, and that was my journey, and how that Moab was this, you know, tribe of kind of dark people that, that were looked down upon because it came out, it was really came out of incest. And the Lord really spoke to me and he said, you know, wow. I have brought you out of your Moab and out of, I brought you across your dead things and I put a word in your mouth. You're standing at a new vantage point now. There are people that want out and they want to be set free, but they don't yes. know how. And so I feel like there are so many people that are really just kind of performing and, and they're, they're trying to, they're disassociating from their shame. They're trying their best, but they just don't know the answer to freedom. So it was a vulnerable journey to write this book, but it was an act of obedience for me. Okay. So for people that don't know, what is your story? Yeah. What, what happened to you? Well, um, you know, I was raised in a Christian home and so many wonderful things about my family that I cherish and always will. Um, but there was a, a period of time when my father really went to a very dark place. My father had been a victim of childhood abuse as well. And, um, you know, during this season, uh, and I want to say that my mother was very unaware of it until all these years later. Um, but during that season, there was sexual abuse, and I was eight years old. Oh, my goodness. And so, you know, I look at my grandkids. I have an eight-year-old grandchild now, and I think, oh, my, my God, you know. And um, my heart breaks when I think about this because what I did, and this is very common if you look at um, psychological research, often children that suffer from childhood sexual trauma will then kind of split, and they they will bury the memory because it was so traumatic. And they will then, often this will resurface in their adult years. And that's what it did for me. And I explained that in the book. But um, I, I, was, I really feel that what it did, and, and again, psychology will tell you this, that your identity is what gets split yeah. because you've been forced to um, bond traumatically with good parent, bad parent and they're all in the same person. And so a child, a child, all they need is love. They're dependent on this person. Yeah. And all they know is that they need this person. And so you carry these dynamics with you. And there's this almost like, I, I really struggle with almost like two of me, um, mm. you know, in the sense that I struggled with these things that I didn't understand. And, and I had this persona now, I was very sincere because my mother raised me right. My mother raised me to love the Lord, and she taught me the word. That was my lifeline. Yeah. My and she God. prayed for me. Did you, and, did you block a lot of this yes. out of your memory for yes. many years? Yes, And I so did. That's almost like a, a protective yes. mechanism. That's exactly because what you it loved is. your dad. Yeah. I loved you my dad. Maybe couldn't deal with what was yes. happening. Yes, and I still love my dad. Yeah, and, of course and you I do. have mercy. And that's, and that's the, the part that's, I think, hard for people to yeah. understand, but it's just natural for a child to love their parent. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so how did the Lord get you through this? How did you get healed? Mm -hmm. And even how were you able to for, Remember, forgive your, yeah. forget? well, yeah, that, and yeah. how did, were you able to well, forgive it was, your dad? It was definitely a process, Marcus. I, um, I'm not going to say this is, this is an overnight kind of a work. I would never tell anybody that. Yeah. But I will say that God is so faithful. And if you commit your life to him and you invite him into your taboo stuff, he is so faithful to finish the work that he begins in you. So he walked me through things that, you know, even the, the Christian community probably could not understand. And back then really weren't equipped to in many yes. ways. But um, like I said, I took these dynamics of abuse and this kind of split identity because my identity had been twisted in shame. And I did not like myself from early childhood. Wow. So I identified with being Brenda the singer. Brenda this, Brenda that. And I didn't really know who I was. And so I walked into these um, abusive adult relationships where I suffered domestic violence. And we've uh, talked about this before. Yeah. But, um, you know, in the process of all this, I'm going to say that the persona of who Brenda wanted to be so that she'd be lovable began to unravel. But that was God's gift to me. And in the unraveling, see, this is what we can't be afraid of. It's ugly but it, he's so faithful there. That's where he's holding you. That's where he's fighting for you. And I began to have to then examine who am I and, and that love doesn't do these things and fight for my child. And so in, it was a process of me forgiving my abusers, 
but learning also to forgive myself for the wow. mistakes, for the bad choices, for the bad motivations, and to learn to have peace with the fact that my Father in Heaven is so faithful and He loves me so much, I have value. Okay, you talk about in the book your Ruth journey, and yeah. you alluded to it a while ago, and it took place right here yeah, in Dallas. Yeah. What is the Ruth journey? <laughs> what does that look like? I, I love Dallas, by the way. It's always going to be in my heart because this is where I healed. And, you know, Ruth uh, set out to follow after God, really. And it's such a beautiful picture. As she followed Naomi, I followed the Holy Spirit. Wow. And he relocated me physically from California to Dallas at a time in my life when I absolutely knew, knew nothing about what would unfold in my future. But I knew I wanted to obey him. I knew that this was going to be a journey. And it was here that he, he provided for me miraculously, first of all, just like Ruth, as I gleaned in the fields, God would position me for just the right jobs, Wonderful. just the right favor, and he would give me these handfuls on purpose and of purpose. And he also, though, I'm going to say that he hardened me to difficulties because he, while he's providing for you, he doesn't always make it just, it, he's not waving a magic wand and saying this is just going to come to you easy. Yeah. He wants us to learn that we have to fight forward like the butterfly that comes out of the catalyst. We've right, got so what does to that learn. mean, fight forward? <laughs> Explain well, that. Well, I think that we've got to understand what the good fight is. We have to understand that, you know, the Bible says that um, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And we, our flesh has a propensity to do or maintain the opposite. But what God wants us to learn is that we can fight the real enemy by choosing to do things God's way. It's kind of like casting your net on the other side of the boat and saying, I'm going to do this your way and I'm going to learn who I am. I'm going to walk in your authority, not my old personified authority. I'm not going to play games anymore because, and I just want to say, you know, Peter, think about Peter. Here was a man, Simon Peter, who had this passionate following after Christ. And he said, oh Lord, I would never be one to deny you. I will never deny you. I would die for you. And Peter meant that. He was not lying. But Jesus looked at him because he saw something else in him. And he said, yes. no, Peter, before the sun rises, before the cock crows three mm -hmm. times tomorrow, you will have denied me three times. And I had that kind of a revelation in my life where I had to realize, like Peter did, who I was not. Wow. He was crushed in the moment that he realized, I denied the man that I would have died for. Wow. How could I have done that? And when I realized what was in me and what was broken in me, I then was dependent on the mercy and the yes. grace of God to give me an identity. Amen. And I'm sorry for my tears, but it's no, just so it's deep wonderful. because I realized yes. that that is the place that we learn who we are Amen. in Christ. Yeah. It's not in all our little religious personifications and all the yeah. passionate things we do. Those are good things. But it's in that moment that you realize who you are without Thank him. You, and that was the man that Jesus prophesied, you're the rock that I will build my church on. Isn't that it was the identity of Christ in him That's that he right. could build on. And, and the new church was born out of that. Well, I just feel like that there's healing and there's hope for you today. Yes. We're going to ask uh, Brenda to tell about a tender moment she had with her earthly mm. father before he died. But if you've never been abused, again, there's no way you can really know the hurt, the pain, the impact. But many people that have been abused, God has healed them, God yeah. has helped them, God has made them strong, God has used that situation to bless so many others. So today, if you need prayer, if you've been abused in any kind of way, or maybe you're, in a, you're hurt or you're, uh, you're in unforgiveness, maybe you feel shame or condemnation. Somehow the devil's lied to you and tried to make you think it was your fault, or you hadn't been able to forgive that person that perpetrated the abuse. If you would like for Brenda to pray for you before we close, call that number that's on the screen today. Well, I know mm. we want to hear about this with her father, but Joni, you had something. Yeah, I just want to say for, for those of you that are watching, I mean, I, you, we were just talking about this Romans 8, 28, you know, all things work together. Yes. It's so yeah. hard to believe that God can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. But I want to tell you, 
I want to encourage you with that. God is a man that cannot lie. And he's going to take what the enemy meant for evil. Amen. And he is going to turn it for good. So you hold on to that. Very good. So okay. Good. Your so earthly good. father yeah. who abused you. And it was really, to me, extra terrible because you were so young, eight mm -hmm. years old when this started. How were you able to forgive him? And tell us about this tender moment you had with him. Well, I want to say that my father returned to Christ when I got older. And so, you know, there was some good years following that. But my dad always had a, a, an issue with emo emotional distance. He just didn't know how to break down those walls. And part of that was because he had been a Sure, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it was on my father's deathbed that um, wow. he, and I, I actually opened the first chapter with this story, but um, that my dad confessed to me and he asked my forgiveness. Wow. And I said, Daddy, I know, I, and I've already forgiven you. And I said, now you need to forgive yourself. Yes. Here's the thing. We, you know, we're in this kind of Me Too culture where the good side of that is that we're, we're providing a safe place for people to now say, you know what, I was abused. And we've got to look at it. We've got to examine it. But we are getting stuck there. And we cannot be stuck where there's no answers and all we are is angry and That's let's right. just expose and the victims, monster. And yeah. victims for the rest right. of our life. Right. Yeah. We can't be victims forever. And that, that's where the enemy wants to hijack your identity and through these wounds. And I believe that we've got to understand, and as the church, we've got to speak out that God loves the perpetrator too. Yes, yes. he does. And so on my dad's beth deathbed, I was able to pray with him. He forgave himself. He accepted the forgiveness that Jesus offered. So powerful. And I wish that he could have done that sooner because yes. he could have walked in the power of that grace. Yes. All right. Well, the book is... Uh, fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You. There is a website on the screen, fightforwardbook.com. And Brenda's available. She speaks, she sings, she ministers. She'd be a great blessing to your church or uh, women's ministry. So there's a, a contact for her. I'm sure you can go to that same website and contact her if you'd like. Actually, Brenda Crouch, yeah. All right, let's yeah, there it is, brendacrouch.com. Calm. Brenda, would you lead us in prayer as we yes, close today? Yes. Father, we thank you for all these people that have written in today that want to know about sonship and fighting forward and making yes, the right choices. Lord Father, deliver them from whatever the enemy has bound them with. We ask you to set them free and order their steps, Lord, yes, and oh put them on the divine path to their purpose and I their destiny. The in I'm Jesus' the name, we thank you for every viewer that has come to watch this program today day in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we love you. We'll see you again right here on Daystar. Continue to call if you need prayer. We'll see you again right here on Daystar.